in the late summer of 1908, Collinsville, Illinois. Near the Cahokia Mounds, construction workers accidentally unearthed a stone tomb that contained several giant bodies, each measuring over seven feet tall. Following this discovery, the bodies quickly disappeared, only to add more mystery to the idea that a large species of humans once inhabited the Americas. What is left of this mysterious mound complex still baffles archaeologists today. Cahokia was considered the largest city north of Mexico, with a population between 25,000 and 50,000 in 1000 AD. This Native American civilization had an advanced system of waterways, agriculture, and textiles, and also many legends of what they referred to as the Mound Builders. Who were these Mound Builders? Could they be linked to the large bodies accidentally found in the ancient tomb? Is it possible that what they had stumbled upon was the remains of a great culture that not only roamed the Americas, but also the world? Researcher Brad Olson suggests that these mounds themselves hold the key to these forgotten ancient beings. It is true that giants have been found in the mounds in the Midwest. There are several different cultures in the Midwest. It started basically in the state of Ohio. It started with the Adena culture, which then became the Hopewell, and then it became the larger Mississippian culture that encompasses the entire Mississippi Valley. There are over 2,000 pyramidal mounds in North America, including Mexico. When you look in the North America, you discover these mounds that the Indians or the Native Americans built to honor the dead giants that probably ruled over them in some way. In the North America, these mounds are built up from the earth itself in the shape of snakes and other various creatures, and some are just mounds. But the thing that's really interesting is when you look, look around the world, you also find they have something called dolmens. Dolmens are just these massive stones put together to let you know as a, as a marker that there's a giant buried here. There's somebody of royalty buried here. And so we've done the same thing here in the North Americas where they build this huge mound, which is very hard to do. So the, the thing that really binds them together is the fact that they're both these massive monuments to people that may have been very, very uh, spiritual to them in the ancient past. In my research, there's over 1,500 newspaper articles that all span from the early 1900s, late 1800s of non-stop discoveries of giant bones in mounds, some of them not in mounds. Some of them are giant bones that have Native American lineage, which is interesting because when you look at some of the writings of the earliest uh, explorers to North America and most of their journals, they describe the chiefs of each tribe as being a giant, some of them 12 to 15 feet tall. And so here yet again, you're seeing this upper status being given to the people that have that genetic lineage. And when you look at that happening in North America, and then you look at the logs of the very first ship that landed on Easter Island, and what was the first thing they said? There was a race of giants there, and the race of giants were the priestly class of the Rapa Nui people and that they were overseeing the construction of those stone heads. That story right there, you can take that and place it in a hundred different areas all around the world and it's the exact same story. That's what's amazing about it. Another strange piece of evidence that might add credence to this mythology is that there are over 100 large human-looking mysterious footprints preserved in stone for thousands of years all over the world. Is this possible physical proof of these legends? For example, you have the Bible, just started the Bible. In the beginning, the, the first book of Moses, two times some giants are mentioned. Everyone remembers the fight between David and Goliath. Goliath was a giant. This is a Bible story. The book of Eskimo, which is the mythology of the Eskimo, simply phrases at that time, the giants were living on earth. The same thing in Egypt. They are clearly talking the so-called pyramid text 
that some of the gods were giants compared to humans. Giants are in mythology actual living, practically in every ancient mythology. So why not in the United States? If this is true, how did all this evidence simply disappear? Across the last 200 years, many hundreds of oversized skeletons have been found in Native American mounds and also Native American cemeteries. Many of these skeletons were around seven to seven and a half feet tall and they were discovered by archaeologists associated with the Smithsonian Institution and they were fully recorded, they were taken away and there are many publications that exist today that you can read all about these discoveries. So what are these giants and what happened to them? Well, firstly, we can say that all of these bones have now gone. Unfortunately, even though many of them were in the Smithsonian, they were repatriated. The beginning of the 1990s as part of the NAGPRA law, the repatriation of Native American indigenous peoples remains. Uh, so unfortunately, they've all gone from the museums and the institutions, so we can't look at them and study them today. But what we can do is look at these reports and glean information about what was going on. Is it possible that traces of their lineage can still be found today, but hidden within the very fabric of humanity? When we ask ourselves a question about direct genetic evidence linking us to giants, the giants of the past, to the best of my knowledge, that DNA evidence does not exist physically at this time. However, when we begin looking at the story of humankind, what we see is that the stories of giants are pervasive, that they have been spoken about in ancient history and that we have found evidence of them in modern times. So the question is, are we related to these giants in some way? When we look at the narrative of our most ancient and cherished spiritual traditions, there's a common theme that runs through all of them. And it's a fascinating theme for me because it says that humankind went through multiple iterations of an intentional process to lead us to the point where we are today. In other words, there were multiple attempts to find just the right genetic formula for the human body that we see today. And in fact, when we look at the Judeo-Christian traditions, what they are telling us is that there was a search for the right genetic formula to hold the power of the human spirit in physical form in this world. And as we went through the multiple iterations of the trial and error, there were forms of life that were created that simply were not sustainable throughout the eons of history. And among those forms of life, we certainly see reference to giants. We see references to the, the Elohim and the Nephilim in the oldest records of the Old Testament. In May of 2019, host of Open Minds, Regina Meredith, led a team of researchers with the help of Gaia to see if they could investigate a series of giant bones belonging to a man named Luigi Muscas on the island of Sardinia. In his book titled The Giants of Sardinia, he boasts pictures of very large human bones and DNA results done by the University of Padova in Italy. The remains tested showed an O blood type, RH negative. This is interesting because Sardinia is one of the few places in the world with the highest concentration of the RH negative O blood type today. Luigi believes this genetic lineage was the result of their ancestors of giant stature. If this is true, is it possible we can find more evidence of this DNA lineage throughout the ancient text? What will this reveal about the true history of humanity in relation to an ancient race of giants and possibly their interactions with Homo sapiens sapiens? 
When you look at a lot of the ancient texts, and I keep going back to them because they really do lay out the plan for us to understand the distant past, you discover that a race of advanced beings that came from space arrived in Mesopotamia, now modern-day Iraq, and also in the area of Africa, but then much later moved and migrated across the planet into North America. They were told to do this by one of their leaders. And in doing this, they also began to mate with other hominids and were giving birth to this very, very large, giant people. The book of Genesis talks about the time when the Elohim, the sons of God, came upon the daughters of men and that they gave birth to giants. And sometimes it was said that the, the women, the, the babies, were so large that they would be removed from the belly in what we would call today caesarean section, that they couldn't be given birth to under any normal circumstance, that they had to be removed artificially. Could these accounts of giants in religious texts add credence to the idea that we might share DNA with this lost species? Experts suggest that if this is true, there are accounts of many types of giants.